Hey, Scott, how you doing? Good, how are you, Julian? I'm doing pretty good. Can you hear me okay? I can. Okay, great. Well, we're here for uh, a little Google Hangout session in anticipation of the Zora Neale Hurston Festival for 2014. Uh, we're participating in a couple of sessions as part of the festival, and the festival is made to the, uh, the jump into the 21st century as well it should. And we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, our session on primary source documents for people who are um, interested in what might be coming up. So uh, I'm going to do a little introduction. Uh, my name is Julian Chambliss. I'm a social professor of history and coordinator of the Africa and African American Studies program at Rollins College. And Scott French, say, say who you are, Scott. Uh, hi, I'm, uh, I'm an associate professor of history at the University of Central Florida, and I work in digital and public history. And we're both participating in uh, a session on primary source documents uh, at Zora Neale Hurston Festival uh, in 2014, January. And so we are going to have a little short discussion to help uh, sort of orient people to that session. And so uh, it's just a, a kind of informal discussion for those of you that might be interested. And so we're going to have a, uh, have a couple of questions. We're going to go back and forth. And hopefully it will be illuminating for those of you that are interested. So, Scott, um, why are you excited about presenting at the festival this year? Well, I'm excited about sharing some of the uh, methods and strategies and little tips I've picked up um, as a historian of community life in uh, the South, particularly. And uh, I'm, I'm excited about sharing some of those, those ideas with people who share my passion for this, this kind of history and, and who may have thought about doing research but really weren't sure how to get started. Okay. And like you, I share uh, uh, a similar sort of interest um, as a uh, historian of the urban experience. I'm really intrigued by Edenville as a community, as a historic community, as an example of African American autonomy in the post uh, Reconstruction period. And I'm also really interested in the fact that Edenville has a really unique relationship to my home institution, uh, Rollins College, in the sense that. Um, Zora Neale Hurston, of course, the famous daughter of Eatonville, was actually briefly employed here um, and had um, strong relationships with uh, uh, professors here. And more broadly, the institution has strong relationships to institutions in Eatonville. So it's an interesting, looking at the records, an interesting dialogue created around the African American experience. So I'm on, we're on the same page. So hopefully, people will be illuminated by uh, that dialogue. Great. Um, so uh, maybe I should throw this back to you, Julian, because I know we had two or three uh, questions that we were going to ask, and I think I'm skipping to the question number three. Well, <laughs> um, let me let me let me let you continue as the MC of this uh, event, this hangout. Yeah, no problem. Um, I think the same question we talked about. Um, who do you think will want to be sure to attend our session? Well, I think anybody who is interested in telling the story of their family, their community, um, and connecting that, that personal story to a larger story. Um, it's really exciting, I think, when you start to use these online tools that, that are now increasingly available to us free, um, and, and finding things and discovering things and making connections. So I think anybody with an interest in, in history and in, in finding their own story will really enjoy this session. Yeah, and I, I agree with you. I think that um, people who are attracted to the festival in general are really attracted to uh, questions of heritage and community and identity. And those are questions that are much easier at some level to explore individually now because we do have so many uh, primary source uh, repositories going online and very powerful tools that are actually free and available uh, to the general public. So looking at some of the things that we look at and but more importantly looking at how we look at them. It's not just simply that you look at the same things but you can look at how we look at them and how we contextualize them and how we you uh, infer 
uh, based on those documents becomes really important because it, it creates an opportunity for uh, people to sort of follow up and do their own history in a way um, that we know people are very enthusiastic about history, um, being historians. Um, we always hear about that. And this is really an opportunity to sort of see what techniques that you can use or what resources are available. Sounds so um, our last question for this, this is a short conversation. In fact, we, we promise to be a very short conversation. Um, how would the, how would this session, people coming to this session, how would it help them to advance their interests? Which is a slightly different. Right. Um, again, I think uh, what we're hoping is that we, one of our strategies is to focus on all the different kinds of primary sources that are out there, including sources that you may not consider as you begin a research project. So we all know that historical newspapers are a wonderful resource, and of course we'll talk about those. We'll talk about the free sites, and we'll talk about the commercial sites, but we'll also talk about things like land records, deeds, and plats, which are now being put online and made available by counties like Orange County, the county uh, that is the home to Eatonville. And so if you're interested in, for example, Eatonville history, which of course you and I are very interested in, a lot of the people at this uh, conference will be interested, you can find You hit up for a second there. <laughs> you yes. froze. I don't know. Okay. If it was, I don't know if it was recorded, but um, so what did you what did you just say in the last sixty seconds? Uh, I was uh, just saying that um, beyond the really obvious resources that we know are important for historical, uh, you know, community research, things like historical newspapers. I think what will be really valuable to people who attend this session will be to uh, think about other sources that are available to us and maybe they've always been available but they haven't been as easy to get to. So right. we'll talk beyond newspapers, we'll talk about uh, plats and deeds and land records right. for communities like Eatonville. In fact, I'm going to use Eatonville as an example. I'm going to look at land records uh, for Zora Neale Hurston's father. Uh, the records showing the purchase of land, the pro. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what happened there. <laughs> yeah, me either. But uh, I agree with you, and I think that from my perspective, the 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 broad, the, the wide uh, swath of documents and um, ways that you can use these documents to not just simply talk about your own story, but really sort of talk about community story. Um, you know, how do you use photographs? You know, what, what, how can correspondence or advertisements or uh, travel brochures or travel logs and things like that be used to really tell a story um, uh, of the world of the past? I think that would be really interesting for people. So. I think we, we, we've done exactly what we said we'd do in these, these, this little hangout. So if you're interested in learning more about uh, primary sources and Eatonville, definitely come to our session um, and check out the schedule and program of the Zora Neale Hurston Festival in 2014 that's online. Um, you can find out more about um, Dr. French and myself uh, through our websites. Um, he's at UCF. I'm at Rollins College. Um, and we'll look forward to seeing you at the festival. Thanks for uh, indulging us in our technological uh, conversation here. Thanks, Scott. Thank you.